what was it like when uh, Marino was born? Tell this how she grew up, her early years. Well, uh, we really wanted her. That's most important for couples uh, mm. to want to have a family started. But we and my husband and I, we were already in the thir- in our thirties. Okay? so we were very anxious to have a baby and please remember that time there's no ultrasound right so we don't know who's coming and uh, but uh, we prepared for a boy right and uh, um, Tun was very very uh, happy and excited you know to prepare for this baby coming all blue my mother came back with blue things and uh, my husband made a beautiful cot and I was showing the the flounces of the cot, the mm. baby's cot for baby to come. And then Marina came and it's all blue. <laughs> <laughs> so the for the first few years you were well, you were you had blue clothes and blue bed sheets and okay. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at the time I knew the the mother's care So you said Tun M actually made the cot himself? Not made, he, he designed the cot. Huh? Wow. Now, let's go to Datin Paduka Marina. Growing up, like, what do you remember most about your mom? Was she the disciplinarian? Oh, yes. yeah. Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> Instantly, yes. She's the in- enforcer, basically, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, very strict with all of us, especially about school and, and things like that. So, yeah, whether we got our homework done or exam time, things like that. Mm. Okay. Did you always feel like she had to split her time between work and and children? No, mm. actually no, because in those days, uh, people worked from, I don't know, eight until four, mm. and then they'd be home. Uh, and we would go to school from 7.30 until... I don't know what time it was, but one thirty like that. Mm. So we'd have a few hours where basically we'd rest and play and all that. And then in a few hours, they'd be home at four o'clock. And also that um, my parents used to come home for lunch. So we'd mm. see them at lunchtime and then we'd see them at tea time. And then there'll be another four hours before we went to bed or so. So actually, we didn't, we just thought it was normal. We didn't feel like... Uh, they are working we were, parents, right? It's just, it's no, just natural. It, yeah. it was just, that's just a normal daily routine. Yeah. Do, do you remember any story that you can share with us, maybe of her disciplining? Oh, you? yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, it goes right brothers. back to Standard 1, actually, because uh, when I was Standard 1, we used to have exams every term, and there were three terms. So the first, term I think I was like 20 something in class or something the second term I was 17 in class and I, I remember that exactly what? yeah I was just wondering about <laughs> um, that um yeah. and then my mom decided that this really was not good enough and yeah. so she decided that she would tutor us before the exams and it was terrible <laughs> it was just absolutely terrible why? I'd be crying every day why would it, why because would... we got scolded all the time I couldn't find a ruler got scolded got, you know everything cry 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 every day and the exams came and then we got the results and I remember very clearly coming home and they said I got my results and she said well, if you got 17 last time, you must have got 7th this time. Right. And I said, no, I came in first. Wow. wow. Um, so it was very clear that all I needed was some brain polishing. What happened? Uh, Were you k- kidding around in class and everything? Just, I think, lazy to right. study, you know. And yeah, so, yeah, so sort of my brain got polished up. Right. It, it lasted a few years and then it got rusty again. <laughs> Or was it like a slippery slope? You're like, oh no, mom's gonna be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually, you know, pick up. <laughs> but studying was this by myself, really. discipline only for education or for other areas in the in uh, your behavior life as too. Well? Behavior yeah. too. Uh, I think for behavior, it, it was really my dad. Mm. Um, and you know, good behavior was you know, prime, you know, in, in our family. I remember very well, we used to have a gardener 
uh, called Pak Hashim, whom we adored actually because every evening we after our bath and our tea, uh, my brothers and I would just follow him around the garden and he would tell us all the Sang Kanchil stories. But one time, I don't know what was the occasion. I, I can't remember what was the occasion. But he reported to my father that I had stuck my tongue out at him. Which is considered oh, very no. rude. You cannot yeah. stick your tongue no. out at an adult. And and it was really something. I mean, he was the gardener, but he felt he had the right to report uh, to my dad about this misbehavior and I, I don't know how old I was. I was maybe, I don't know, five or six thereabouts or maybe slightly older and got nicely spanked for it. So, yeah. Those were the days when spanking was considered Yeah, it was, was, yeah. yeah. Not abuse, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, we don't do that anymore. But Did you guys uh, stick out like a sore thumb though? I mean, you guys grew up in a very modern oh, no, yeah. gender equality thing but everybody else didn't have that st- you should be seen but not heard. Was that something you guys went through? Yeah, well, being heard was not a thing. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that some much. things are not like, right, yeah. Um, but no, I think we were considered... Well, generally, we didn't think ourselves as different. Mm. We thought ourselves as normal. Mm. Um, until one time, I the only time I ever felt I was strange... Uh, was because somebody made me feel that I was strange. I, I we knew this family, uh, lots of girls. This was in Kedah. In Kedah, in Alista, right. lots of girls, and the mother uh, was a homemaker, and uh, and we would go and visit them sometimes. Um, and I remember the girls all like crowding around me and saying, "Oh, your mother works," you know. Poor you, like you never had, uh, you never enjoyed being spoon fed and and all, and it really made me feel like I was inferior because I had a mother who worked outside the home, right? And I was really puzzled by that. I I never never understood that. Like to me, the most natural thing in the world is for a mother to go out to work because that's all I saw right. from when I was young. But then there was this family where, and in fact, I knew lots of families, my friends, uh, whose mothers didn't go out to work. Um, but you know, it was just this one family that that these girls made me feel as if there was something wrong with us. Did it us. change you? How did it? No, you. it didn't. I I was just puzzled by it. But then, no, I, it didn't. I mean, I look at my parents and I see what they're doing and I couldn't see anything wrong with it. And I didn't feel particularly deprived. And seeing that mom's so strict, it was quite fine with me that she wasn't <laughs> home all the time. You know? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah like... <laughs> We can breathe well, and then yeah. she comes back. Whoops! <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah. But how did your mom change your view or shape your views on women's rights and equality? Being a working mom. Well, I think I don't think she deliberately set out mm. to do that. I think you know sometimes these things happen by osmosis. Really, you, you know, this is what you see all your life. This is what you expect as normal and you just grow up with it um and so for me it was normal uh for a woman to be working uh even though she's married and has children it's normal for her to have equal stature uh with her husband to be involved in all the decisions at home um and and that sort of thing um uh the one thing I would, I would say is that my mom doesn't cook, so I didn't grow up with a you know with a mom who knew how to cook, and so I I kind of don't know you know didn't know anyway uh, as a child much about the kitchen or how to put food together or anything right. like that. We we had you know helpers to do that, um, but yeah, it it didn't. Um, so you know I just grew up that way. And my my daughters too grew up that way because they saw their grandmother, and they saw me. And it's something that I think you you don't have to push. You set the example, and they will absorb it. Because now I see 
my daughters as they grow up naturally you know thinking that way uh, thinking that they should work and thinking that they should give back um to society because that's that's the that's example that's the example they've seen all their lives both of you are mothers so as mothers what advice would you give to other mothers who are finding it very difficult to juggle between work and family because that is still expected of them to be good at work and also handle a perfect family marry a man who will do his bit at home that's for sure that's great advice yeah <laughs> because that's that's key right a uh, a uh, family is made of father and and mother so how come you have to do everything mm. you know uh i think that's that's one of the key things and how did you juggle between work and children at the time got a good man yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes also that you know i think we we stress too much about having to be the perfect mother mm. and the perfect uh worker and the perfect everything and i think we should lighten up on that you know um so i i think long term like i think in yearly term so i just accept that at certain times when i have to be a good worker and i just focus on that and there are other times when i have to be a good mother and i just do that i just don't have to divide myself uh every single day so that when you look at it overall that it works out you know um and anyway you know i i'm not into coddling my kids too much and they have to learn to do things themselves yeah. so, you know as well then well for me i think she should first she should sit down and reorganize her own life she wants to fulfill her career that's one thing and then to be uh, a mother a wife and a mother and so forth can but to uh, where her career is concerned she should be part of it if if it's uh, if it's in a company or corporate kids who have flexible hours that's the best time for her you know because then when they have children then they will want to breastfeed the baby and uh, they can stay home for that period for example yeah? that this one and secondly i would advise them not that i'm selfish but not to have too many children and there are people they my meet qualified kind who have so many children not so many not as much as 10 but some by 5 6 can and how could she manage she manage all six even though there's a caretaker baby care baby apothecary give her ah uh in the house but it's so different because they are foreigners one thing and we were very lucky to have uh our in-laws and our own people to work with us that if you bring uh ponies um caretaker from overseas for example i i think you tap was it it was not uh, satisfying so i would advise uh, the mother especially uh to plan the families and, uh, and also to so that she can continue working and make use of her qualification which she, which she has spent many many years to get it okay this too and when once they have a family they must love the family they must look after the family also It's because uh, now there are so many different types of diseases are uh, cropping up whereas before it was zero now it's coming up 2 4 7 10 and everything was was uh, was uh, in a, in a mess because of certain groups who doesn't believe in immunization mm. or vaccination mm. so i hope mothers today will think about this seriously don't listen to um not the kind of false news but sometimes it's a doctor who says all these things uh, the anti vaccine uh, campaign mm. but uh, they ha- they have their own mind that consult the proper uh, person to what uh, they have heard about taking care of children 
and uh, immunization. This, uh, up what you call it, uh, pa- parent what is it? support group. No? It's parent support and parenting. Mm. Parenting is very important. But sometimes they don't have the time, even before marriage. Can kita do lah? Can ada kursus, ada kursus kawin kuli sebelum. What do they teach? I don't know. Can, <laughs> but I don't think it is the type of teaching that uh, fits the couple who's going to get married. Can so, I I still I am still confident, and I still up on the. Uh, Hoping that uh, our women, regardless multiracial, get to know what is parenting. When once we have a qualification, what to do with it and how to share it with uh, the home and the office.